by, um, Living with Down Syndrome by Michael Gallon on the 1st of February 2017. I was born in 1980. I lived in Kildare. I have one brother, one sister, and a sister-in-law. My father, who is Michael Senior, he is retired from the army and retired. My mum, who is here t today, plays a counselor and a climate therapist. I live in Newburgh in County Kildare. I attended primary school School Moor in Newburgh. I attended the, the, the Patricia Brothers Secondary School. I am hobbies. I am interested in reading books, listening to music, and playing my bow on. I also love acting, and I'm taking part in shows with the Newburgh Pantomime Troupe and the Newburgh Musical Society, who are actually doing Sweeney Tart with the musicals this year, and with the pantomime, they're doing Peter Pan. I like to write poems and make God plays by the different groups that I, that I am involved in. In, in 2010, the National Advisory Council of Down Sydney, Maryland was elected. I was the first chairperson at, at the time. We represented the first of people with Down Syndrome in the, in the organisation. We made presentations to the, the national government on medical and education service for people with Down Syndrome. We, we, are, we were invited speakers at the, at the European Commission, European Parliament conference in Odessa with Pat Clark, who is here today, in Portugal and New York, reporting on political rights and human rights for people with Down syndrome. Now, this is my favorite part. I worked as a freelance TV reporter in RTE on the afternoon show, but unfortunately, because of the cutbacks, I was too good for them. I, I reviewed Pant Minds, reported on the exhibitions, and interviewed Brian Cordy, who is the legend of Horning in County Kilkenny. I, I also interviewed Brian O'Driscoll, and the two brothers who represented Ireland twice in Eurovision, we have the Treadwood as well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, recently, in the past few weeks ago, I published my first book. This is the first book I have. This is called Straight Up, No Sugar. And it was basically about myself and about the person that I am today. And I presented this book to Miss Anne Anderson, who is the ambassador to the, U to the UN. A reason for writing the book, and I'll tell you why now. I wanted to explain that I was born with Down syndrome. I wanted readers to look at me now doing the same things as everyone else, and living my life to the full, as you can see. I wanted to share my experience of living with Down syndrome. We're our inclusive learning initiative, I and I for short. And that means I studied, I studied media studies in the National University of Ireland, Minute, for three years and graduated with a, with a certificate in personal learning media studies because I've always been interested in media. When I started in RTE, and then I, I, be, I became too good for them afterwards. Um, we had about four other um, students with me on the ILI and they were Mark, the, Mark studied anthropology, was the community and youth development, Lisa did Celtic studies, 
and Stephanie, who got engaged over the Christmas, last Christmas now, she did music and arts. Now, ladies and gentlemen, experience of college. This course was fully inclusive. It, it was difficult in the beginning to settle in, as you can see. I studied the history of media, making a documentary, I did script writing, uh, editing, presenting for radio and television. I, I wish that class would be for me right now at the moment because I'm very good at public speaking. My final project was a, do a documentary on my college experience, which I will show you later. And this is the name here. It is called, don't tell me, show me. Now, internship. I was very lucky to have a two week internship in Rome. I've been to Rome before on my holidays, but this was my main highlight of Rome. The director of the English department in Franklin Radio, Mr. Sean Patrick Lovett, made me very welcome. Now, I think this is, would be appropriate to ask you all to write down the website. So, my book has all available on the website www.phonicalradio.fr which I'm very proud of. Now, <clears throat> I have to be careful of what I'm going to say here. So, um, as you can see, we, uh, we met uh, Pope Francis and that was the main highlight uh, for me and my parents. So, unfortunately, my mom met the Pope before I did. So that was all right, like, that was okay. And uh, as you can see, uh, they, were, they, were shaking, they were shaking hands. And then it came to me then afterwards, and I said a few things, I, I said a few words uh, to Pope Francis that I used to work in, in clinical radio, and uh, it was an honor to meet him. And then my mom began to cry. But it was an emotional day and I was very honoured and privileged to meet um, Pope Francis. And my dad is there as well. Well, you, you can't see one uh, of the slide, but he was there at the time. And he was, uh, had a talk with the Pope as well. And on my iPad, actually, it was a, pho it was a photograph of, of, of that very picture when my dad, my dad was on this side of me. Just to let you know. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now, I, I'm, I'm going to play you my uh, reflection on meeting the Pope on Wednesday, the, on the 22nd of January. And I hope that you will try it. Hello to one and all. My name is Michael Gannon, and I want to tell you about my special day here in Hanukkah. To be here is an honor, and I am so lucky and proud of the fact that I am meeting someone who is very special to the world. I met him in Peter Square on Wednesday. On Tuesday evening, I did some meditation so that I could sleep well and be ready to meet the Pope. When I woke up in the morning, I was calm, but also a small bit nervous, thinking about the day and what I would say to the Pope. Myself and my parents arrived at 8 a.m. and found our seats. I got a bit nervous sitting and looking at all the people. When the Pope arrived, in the Pope mobile, the crowds began to clear. I felt relieved when I saw him. The day could finally begin. I saw the paper guards and I was relieved. It was finally happening. 
Cari fratelli e sorelle, buongiorno. After his tour of the cloud, he came more on the altar, and I got a good look at him. After Mass, it began to rain heavily. I felt uneasy because I thought he might go inside, but he did not. He spent some time with the sick people and spent some time with them. The rain stopped as he was supporting us. We had to move from our seats to stand in front of the main entrance of St. Peter. I watched as he made his way towards us, and I was thinking about what I would say to the Pope. He spoke to my mother first, then me, and he gave me a blessing on my forward head. I felt at ease. I said my few words, and then my father spoke to the Pope, and then he moved on to the next person. I was very happy and felt really emotional. I knew that I am a very lucky person to get an opportunity like this to happen for my parents and myself. And finally, I can say this today, Michael Gannon finally signing off. Thank you to one and all. In 2015, I visited Australia and New Zealand because the reason why is because there my dad uh, was doing a family tree and a family history about it. I did a presentation to the staff and the PhD students in the, in the Centre for Disability Studies in Sydney University. Now ladies and gentlemen, I'm very proud to say that I became a godfather to this little baby boy. He is Chloe Gannon, and he was born last year in 2016. And uh, he is a great young man, and I'm very proud to be his godfather. And Colleen's sis twin sister, um, Laura, is the godmother of this baby wonder, as I call him. Now, we are people. I am an adult with Down syndrome. I like people to see me and of my condition. My message to everybody is start looking at Down syndrome and see people, to see who we are. We are the same as everyone around us. And we live our life and we live our lives to the full. And we also follow our dreams and use our talents. Doors opening. As you can see from my presentation there, a lot of possibilities for people with Down syndrome today. If you meet a new parent in your medical profession, please do remember this. This is very important. Encourage parents to see possibilities and less of the problems. We all have the ability. We need to believe that. Easy to read mental information. Now, this is very important for all medical students. I'm going to explain to you how we actually do this. We use short sentences simplified language and in the larger front. Please refer to the medical medicine guidelines produced by National Children's Hospital Trinity College in collaboration with Down syndrome Ireland. Now, when I go on holidays, I always go to a place in outside Paris. And so this place is called Trolley, which I'm going this year. Trolley is a place outside Paris that I visit each year. 
It was set up by Sam Fanier, a living saint, and he is a living saint. He believed that all people are important in the eyes of God, and I mean that. He believed that every person has a contribution to life, and I agree with him, I hope you all do. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as I said before, this is my documentary. It's called Don't Tell Me It's Me. I'm going to finish off by um, saying thank you very much for having me over uh, to, do, to do the talk, and I hope that you will um, enjoy this. My name is Michael Gallen, and this is my story about life in college. I am an adult with Down syndrome, but I am also an adult with true potential. My vision is to change people's perception of Down syndrome. Before I came to college, I was looking for a challenge in my life, and I always knew I wanted to further my education. My dream has come true, to be a student in university. My brother and sister, and both of my parents went to college, and so I wanted to do the same thing. Thankfully, Minute recognised this and opened their doors to me and my future. I am a student in the National University of Ireland, Minute. In 2011, I applied to university through the Inclusive Learning Initiative, ILI for short. The ILI is an access and support system for students with electrical disabilities studying in higher education. As a student, you need to be able to use campus supports and services such as the library. The staff in the university are very nice, so it makes things easier for me. I work on projects and do research as part of my studies in media. This year, I am doing radio and television production. very happy that my son is a student in Maynooth. This, I suppose, is the beginning of another road for Michael, which began um, when he started in mainstream primary school in 1985, at a time when people with Down syndrome uh, were excluded, if you like, from mainstream education. So when the uh, program, the INI program began, it really was an opportunity for him to realise his dream. He really always wanted to be like his brother and sister who had gone to college. He wanted to do the same. Obviously the, the, the initial challenge was just trying to integrate into a different uh, element of society. I live a very independent life in college. I know when and where I need to be, and I have my preference, such as getting my lungs in O'Brien's. I come and go to college nearly every day. I have got to know the bus driver and friends through this. I have developed my social skills and I have chosen my friends. Being a student in any way minute makes me realise how important friends are. When I first arrived I was in a state of panic because I didn't know anyone 
but over time things got easier. I began to work hard, focus on my studies, my friends, and live the college life to the full. I was given the chance to show what I can do and to show the talent that I have. Clon is a very caring person. We work together with Brandon in a tech plus class with support students technical and presentation skills. My lecturers are helpful, supportive and listen to me. They know the best ways that I can present my learning because they have got to know me and the person that I am. I think the ILI is a really vital part of the university in the 21st century. Uh, university is supposed to be about education for everyone and therefore it should be an inclusive an, um, aspect to it for every person who is interested in taking advantage of it. I want to become a student in IMI Minute on the ILI programme because I wanted to change the perspective of someone who has done them in um, media studies. I've always been interested in media since I started in RTE and since then I decided to take media. What I have learned throughout my new is to focus on my work, focus on uh, having a lot of crack with everyone and getting to know everyone as well. I'm just me and I focus on me, only me and my friends. I feel that I've won the lotto. I feel that I want uh, to become a, a, a person of my parents and they're proud of me. When I started in uh, Minute, I felt that I wanted to become a man, turn into a student. Now I'm a student, turning into a man. Um, I wanted, my, my cousins has grown a lot since when I started um, here in Minute. And my, my self-belief and the abilities that I've overcome in Minute have just come around now this year. Um, when I was younger, back in my day, I felt that I wanted to achieve something in my goal. Um, I just have completed my first book as well, so what I'm proud of to say is well, the book is entitled Straight, Straight Up No Sugar. And then after my book was launched in 2012, two years ago, then I became a product in media. I'm happy and I'm sad because I'm happy that I'm with my friends and I'm graduating with my friends. Sad is that I don't want to go home. I want to focus on my own studies and I just wanted to be a student in my news. But really I'm happy because what I have what I have achieved and what I have learned in my news with everyone. This is Laura. She is one of a kind, one in a million. She has made me a stronger person than I am today. When I first met Laura uh, my first impression of Laura was that she wanted to work with me as a student and then she wanted to work with me on, in media. I think it's fantastic to work with Laura. I think she's um, an ambassador. She is um, a wonderful friend. I said, but I was very nervous at the beginning mm -hmm. of my three years in college. Yeah. Um, as I said before, with the lectures going so quick and mm. um, and of course, get off to speed mm. in the first year. But then come into my second and final year, then I said again, without you, I would have been here for my three years in college. Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> I have achieved a lot in my time in college life. I want to celebrate life and to look back at what I have achieved. I wanted to show you all that you must follow your dreams and also follow your heart in whatever you want to do.